sure is a lot to see here. Thrones. Stop being coy, Head. Do you know this place or not? Ah, Mimir, the smartest man alive. I know many things. Well, whatever this place is, it looks important. To who? There is little of value here. Follow me, Atreus. On my way. Ooh, Ilma! Once you retrieve the whetstone, please take utmost care while handling it. It is a priceless relic, after all. Going towards the statues of the oarsmen, then thread past between them. Mimir, you never did tell me why Freya spit in your face. Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances, and not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won. But the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses. And for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore. But a rather senseless waste of precious life. Wouldn't you agree, brother? <sighs> Precisely. Enough was enough. And at last, Odin's most brilliant advisor became determined to find a more enlightened path. He set about to broker a peace between the gods. It took some convincing, but ultimately Odin was persuaded to marry his deadliest enemy, a certain Vanir goddess, legendary not only for her fertile beauty, but her genius at the very Vanir magic that Odin had long aspired to master. Freya married Odin? What was in it for her? It was a sacrifice to protect her people, a selfless act of love. 
Truly, she deserves better than she got. But of course, there's more to that story. out of hell. We should look for more like this. Ah, Fafnir. I always wonder what became of him. Wait, Fafnir? Like, Fafnir's storeroom, Fafnir? The very <gasps> one. But Sindri said he was a dwarf. He was. And now he's a dragon. Funny how life works, isn't it? He's chained up. Perhaps we should keep an eye out for binding shrines and free the poor bastard. Hi, lads. He's no friend of mine. This little scrot was a constant source of annoyance amongst Aesir and Vanir alike. Then why free him? Trust the recently liberated brother. No one deserves to be held captive like this. Even a greedy little dwarf come dragon. Boy, over here. Hold on. Let me read this. I'll get this dwarf to become a dragon. Don't 
don't know for certain, though I wager his pension for stealing magical artifacts had something to do with it. Must have stolen the trinket from the wrong Banyard Goddess. since we last crossed paths. I had legs. A wee little bugger. <laughs> well, I think Dragon hasn't done much for his personality.
Can't believe Odin and Freya were ever married. Love and hate are more closely intertwined than you might imagine. For instance, Odin hates the giants and Fjorgun, one of Odin's great loves. So Thor's half god and half giant? Where? Once Fjorgun was gone, lonely ages passed for Odin. And as war with the Vanir raged, I could see what he really wanted beneath his bluster. And after no small amount of convincing, they are agreed. For a while there, he really turned on the charm. He seemed happy. He seemed interested in making her happy. He granted her so many wishes, I can scarcely recall them all. The peace held, and I truly believed all had worked out better than I could have planned. But Odin's true face showed itself again in the end. Oh, he won Freya's trust, and she taught him some of her Vanir magic, another choice she would live to bitterly regret. Sadly, despite his wise counsellor's best efforts to persuade him that peace was the only true path to stave off Ragnarok, Odin never let go of his obsession with Jotunheim. The taste of Vanir magic led him to new forms of experimentation and new levels of depravity. Obviously, the marriage to Odin didn't last, but how did Fran end up a hermit in the woods? Oh, that was a singular piece of cruelty, even for Odin. As if the marriage wasn't punishment enough. Freya was better to him than he deserved. Enough. No stories. Not while on foot. Our focus is the road. Completely understand. I'll finish later, lad. Sendry, could you take a look at this? Honestly? I don't have much else going on right now. Ugh. The travelers. Oh, disgusting. Mm, smelly, covered in God knows how many little beasties, but gorgeous armor. Let's see if I can't make something more sanitary. Yes? I can do whatever you need.
Well, don't buy anything on my account. I still can't believe a son would kill his own father. That's crazy, right? I know, he only got one side of the story. But come on, his own father? I mean, I get angry at you sometimes, but... Do you? I mean, sometimes, yeah, a little. But I'd never stab you in the back. No. This clan really didn't want anyone coming in. How are we supposed to get through? There must be a way to lift the gate. Maybe with the big water wheel. My thought as well. I see improvement. Are you angry? What? With me. When? Oh, I guess sometimes when you don't think I can do something, but I can. It is not always easy to know what. It's okay. I get it. I'm little. Where's that whetstone? I wonder.
Give him what for? Atreus, follow me. Here, boy. Yes, sir. I don't know what we're still doing here.
happened over there? This is the Sodden. That ghost son? How do you know? The sigil. It matches the dagger we found in his father's back. He stood his ground, but it was not enough. They betrayed him. Betrayal begets betrayal. My guess, the young one murdering his dad didn't sit well with the others. He thought himself ready to lead. It cost him his life. I guess. Look there, lad. By his feet. The whetstone! Yes. They used it to smash his face in. They did? Ew. Whetstone behind. If Sinjo wants it, he must be really useful. Well, lad, Reavers have very specific priorities. If it's not shiny and you can't eat or drink it, might as well use it as a blunt object.
Boy, over here. Yes, sir. There's a scroll here. It belonged to the sun. Wow, this goes on and on. Father, forgive me. Filled with remorse. Forget my actions. Had he thought before taking action, there would be no need for regret, yes? Yeah. Maybe we should bring this to his father. Back at the storeroom. down there. We can dock the boat here. You're telling us how Frey ended up living in the woods. Aye, she married Odin. She stuck it out through all manner of indignity, all in the name of maintaining peace and safety for her people. But Odin's madness, his tyranny, his corruption of her magics, it became more than she could stomach, and at long last she broke it off. Odin's wrath was fierce, and his curses upon her were more than she dared to fear. But her magic was so much stronger than his. 
After so much time together, he knew her vulnerabilities and exploited them to craft curses she could never break. Oh, like not being able to leave Midgard. Worse still, he robbed her of her warrior spirit. Freya cannot fight, even to defend herself. No living thing may she harm by blade nor spell. In a world this belligerent, what choice does she have but isolation? Poor Freya. I guess if I was her, I'd spit in your face too. Aye, lad. So would I. You didn't happen to find the wet stone. <laughs> We found your whetstone. Oh, wonderful! This staining is unusual. The Reavers used it to smash another Reaver's face in. Oh, wonderful. Here, for your trouble. I can't wait to test out the new whetstone. It may not look like much, but it's practically humming with magic. I've needed a new one after my brother borrowed the last one. I saw him... Spit on it. To lube it up! He said. I didn't ask for it back. 